Introduction to Functions First, we'll learn a few vocabulary. Relation It refers to a relationship between variables. There are many ways to represent a relation. We can describe it using words. We can describe it using a set of ordered pairs. We can use a table of values. We can use a graph. We can use an equation. We can use a mapping diagram. Function. A function is a special relation where each dependent variable, or x, corresponds to exactly one independent variable, or y. When we describe relations, we notice different patterns. We can have one-to-one -one relationship. For example, you and your student number is a one-to-one -one relationship. Nobody else but you has that student number. You cannot share your student number with someone else. And you cannot have two student numbers at the same school. So you have only one. Another example is you and your driver's license number. Once again, you're not supposed to have two different driver's licenses. And two people should not be sharing the same driver's license. Third example is a social insurance number. You're supposed to have only one social insurance number. You're not supposed to share that number with someone else. Next, let's look at one-to-many relationships. An example is we have a master key that opens many doors. Usually, one key opens one specific door, but if you have a master key, you can open maybe all the doors in that same building. So that's one to many relationship. How about many to one relationship? An example is there are many ways for us to go to the same destination. You can take row number one, row number two, row number three. Okay, eventually, you can reach the same place. So you have many choices just to go to one place. Can you think of more real life examples of different relations and functions? Next, we'll talk about mapping diagrams. A mapping diagram visually shows a relationship. We use arrows to map the independent variables to the dependent variables. Here's an example. From before, we talked about that we can use a master key to open different doors. So from the key, I have three arrows going to the three doors. Okay, so key is independent of the doors because it might open more than three doors. And which door can be open depends on my master key. So this is our one-to-many relationship. And this scenario, I can tell you right now, it is not a function. A one-to-many relationship is not a function. Another example. We talked about um, that we are traveling and we have different ways to go to a destination. So let's say route 1 and route 2, both of them leads to home. So this is a many-to-one relationship. And we draw the arrows from route 1 to home. And we also draw an arrow from route 2 to home. So in this case, this is a function. Next. Is a student number example. So we talked about that each person can only have one student number from their school. And that student number is different from everyone else's student number. So this is a one-to-one -one relationship. And this is a function. So this relationship is a function. What do we notice? From We have three different types of relationships, and two of them are functions. 
So a function either has a one-to-one -one relationship or a many-to-one -one relationship. And when we have a one-to-many relationship, it is not a function and we just call it as a relation. Next, let's describe a set of ordered pairs. We have one or more points. Okay, The points are called ordered pairs because they are written in a specific order. x coordinates first, y coordinates second. So there's an order to it. And these points, they are part of a relationship. So instead of saying relationship all the time, we say it's a set. So whenever you see the word set, you know there's a relationship of some kind. So the set in symbol form, they are represented by the green braces that you see on the screen. So it's the special shape brackets. Okay, they're called braces. And then you can see that I have five points in there. And it's very colorful. So let's explain what is happening. So rule number one, when we order okay, these ordered pairs inside a set, we line them up in the ascending order of the independent variable x. So that's the orange numbers. So when you look at the numbers in orange, they are from the smallest to the biggest. So I have negative 3, negative 1, 0, 0, then the same, and then 4. That's rule number 1. Rule number 2 is that if we have multiple pairs with the same independent variable, then we also line them up in the ascending order of dependent variable y. So for the two points that have the same x value, 0, 0,2 and 0, 0,7, I lined up the two numbers that are in light blue. So 2 is before 7. So there's an order to where to put these points. We do not put them in there randomly. We put them in an order. Now rule number 3 Make sure we write a set of braces around the points. Many students, they will give me the points, but they forget the uh, brackets or the braces that represent a set. And that's where they lose their marks. So you don't want to be that person, so please remember to write them down. Let's look at an example. For the set of ordered pairs, negative 1 and 2, negative 1 and 0, 2 and 2, and 3 and 4. Determine if it is a function, state the domain and range, and represent the relation using a mapping diagram. So let's do one thing at a time. Is this a function or not? So we want to check if it is a one-to-one -one relation. Do we see one-to-many relation? And do we see many to one relation? Remember that if it's, if it's not a function, then we will see one to many relationship. So we notice that negative one, okay, in our x coordinate, it gives us two different y coordinates, okay? So we can get zero and we can get two. It is not a function. We can interpret it as we have a key that has a sticker that says its number is negative 1. And this key happens to open door 0 and door 2. And then we have a different key that is labeled 2 and it opens door 2 as well. And then we have a key that is labeled as 3, it opens door 4. So because we have one master key in the three keys in total, we say that the set is not a function. It doesn't matter if uh, other points shows a one-to-one -one relationship. If you have one-to-many relationship for even just one x-coordinate, then the whole set is not a function. Now, let's state the domain and range. 
So far, I haven't described the uh, definition at all. So let's look at the definition. The word domain refers to all possible x values that are present inside the set. So look at our four points. What are the possible x coordinates? We can only have negative 1, 2, or 3. Only three numbers. So this is one way to write down the set of values. Remember our braces, okay? And then we say x because we're trying to talk about the domain. And then we draw a vertical line, which means such as, uh, and then we have x equals to negative 1 or 2 or 3. So it's not all three numbers at the same time. The comma means they could be different numbers. Now, another way to write the domain is just list the three numbers and then we write domain at the front because we have x and y. So we want to say it's the domain so that people know that we want to talk about x. In this course, it is okay to write this simple form. You, you do not need to write the uh, more complicated form that uh, mathematicians usually use. Next is the range. The word range refers to all possible y values that are present inside the set. So we look at the y coordinates. So we have 0, 2, and 4. So this is how we write it. Okay, we have a set of values. Okay, so y belong to a set of values such that y equals 0, 2, or 4. Or if we write it in the simple form, we state range, and then we write a colon, and then we put the braces to represent we have a set of three numbers. So we have 0, 2, and 4. And you can write this uh, in this course instead of the formal way of writing it. Lastly, we want to represent the relation using a mapping diagram. So first, we draw two ovals to represent a domain and range. And then we want to fill in the domain with values. So I have negative 1, 2, and 3 from the ordered pairs. And the first rule that you need to remember is that we want to list numbers in ascending order. So that's why I have negative 1, 2, and 3 in ascending order from smallest to largest. When we were listing um, the domain and range, I actually listed the numbers in ascending order as well. I just didn't tell you about it. We're supposed to list the numbers in ascending order in the domain and range as well. So, part two of the rules is that we do not count repeating numbers more than once. So negative one was repeated. However, in the domain, we do not write it twice. We only write it once. Next, we write down the range. Once again, list the numbers in ascending order and then do not repeat the same number. So we have zero, two, and four. Next, we use arrows to indicate the pairs. Negative 1 is mapped to 0 and 2. 2 is mapped to 2. And 3 is mapped to 4. So we have completed a mapping diagram. Now, what about the other forms that we talked about? Recall that relations can be represented in different ways. So in this video, we talked about order pairs and we talked about mapping diagrams. Okay, we didn't talk about words, table of values, graph, or equation yet. Words, they tend to be word problems, so we'll see those for later. In the next video, we'll learn more about domain and range and then we will come back and talk about what happens to tables of values, graphs, and equations. Thank you for watching.